Hello and welcome to Ek Mulakat. Dear friends, you are watching the English version of the Hindi program Ek Mulakat, where we bring wonderful personalities for you to take inspiration from. We all need some inspiration at times. You know, life's time sometimes can become hard. And uh, somebody said, rather than reading 40 books, you talk to an experienced person. That is, you know, you will get more life lessons. So let us talk today to Nileshwari Basak, the founder and director of WIGP, which is Worldwide Institute for Grooming and Pageants. You know, there is, I'm not going to explain it, what it is actually. We have a lot to come today. Let's talk directly to Nileshwari Basak. Madam, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. The, the, you know, what you do and all those things are, you know, I don't have the capacity to list that out from the memory. Right. So uh, tell us about yourself. I think I would like to initiate this beautiful conversation with few humble words. It says, Aon mein urte hain jo parinde, Oonchi hawaon mein urte hain jo parinde, Unke par nahi hausle mazboot hote hain. Jo apne kadmo ki काबिलियत पर विश्वास रखते हैं वो अक्सर मंजिलों पर जरूर पहुंचते हैं देर से बनो और जरूर कुछ बनो क्योंकि वक्त से लोग खैरियत नहीं हैसियत पहुंचते हैं और मेहनत करो तो इतनी करो कि खुदा बोले कुदरत बोले जा बंदे ले ले तेरा हक बनता है दिस इज हु आई एम कैन आई कैन आई ट्राई ट्रांसलेटिंग दैट फॉर आवर इंग्लिश ऑडियंस और और would you give a, a yes. little bit it of an english translation it says that it says that uh, believe in yourself have full firm conviction and uh, go for your dreams even if it's it's somewhat uh, you are late as per the time zone but actually no you never late because each one of us is in our journey of self perfection trying to master and trying to learn our share of lessons so uh, go for your dreams go ahead and achieve it and mother nature shall up hold your full firm conviction and bestow upon you what you truly deserve this vision of you when did you acquire this from your early childhood or uh, your late teens or uh, when did you have this much clarity of vision i, I really feel i am a blessed soul and i've lived a very privileged childhood i remember the first tv program i was doing i was barely 6 years old Okay. doing children's program at delhi doordarshan thanks to my mom she was like really fond of uh, taking me to places uh, i was barely 9 years old i had attained delhi championship gymnastics i'm a gold medalist at the state level giving solo performances a topper throughout my school life i was barely 16 17 um i was making waves in the glamour industry i featured on all top uh, magazine covers i've done femina femina fashion feature savvy is weekly with you know personality based interviews at a very young age i was a topper throughout my school life and um, a delhi university topper from sri ram college of commerce which is an ace commerce college in the whole of yes, asia yes. and uh, i topped delhi university and shattered all past university records and set up a new record by scoring 90% wow. microeconomics wow at the year i topped university i got offer from rajshree productions for maine pyar kiya Salman Khan's first film Bhagyashree's role was offered to me Shah Rukh's first serial Fauji was offered to me for the lead role but I was a kind of a you know genius always wanting enough uh, giving enough importance to my cats that's when I was preparing for my MBA and I went for my MBA marketing finance from a top business school I just had a thought you know even uh, an offer uh, to act with someone like salman khan didn't lure you into it can't can't just you know digest that fact how did you you know somebody who is got clarity of vision and she knows who she is i mean what people ask for i already had be it intellect or geniusity or look or connectivity but my deepest inner calling was god realization self actualization i mean i i remember i was barely 7 and i got saraswati mata sid mantra when okay. kids would say their nursery rhymes i would chant saraswati mata sid mantra and this that divine grace that kept me very uh, awakened so uh, my deepest inner calling was god realization and in that search 
I went to almost every spiritual school of thought. I mean, I, I have had been exposed to Brahma Kumari's Art of Living, Osho, all uh, uh, other metaphysical sciences like crystals and, uh, you know, you have psychic dowsing and you've got uh, pranic healing, you've got S. So I was trying to realize God and I went to almost every guru and my intent was very clear, which was Brahma Vidya and acquiring, getting the jigsaw puzzle straight where I could realize God inside me. And um, a time came where I felt that I've arrived and that's when it was time to pack bags and go because I'd cleansed my karma. But uh, higher intelligence has her own ways of working and she wanted me to go back and awaken, create mass emancipation and awaken the souls. So my, my dialogue with intelligence was that then I should sit like a guru mai. If I have to awaken the souls, the dictate came that you have to sit in a very glamorous avatar because today's genre, today's generation is uh, not very guru friendly, not very cult friendly. And they are talking about practical spirituality and they're talking about the who they are. So mm -hmm. when they come to you for beautifying themselves, so I do specialize in skin, hair, makeup, cosmetology and something I acquired from my sister Divya Sooth having worked at body care for several years. And, uh, but with all of that, I knew that there was more to making a person look beautiful. So uh, that's when I propounded a subject called holistic, generic personality grooming, okay. which propounds that every individual is an amalgamation of your microcosm, which is your inner world, and your macrocosm, which is your outer world. Okay. Only when your microcosm and macrocosm comes into perfect synergy that you deliver an image which is an aiming Im winning image so that's how uh, my specialization is grooming queens that uh, is something mind-blowing <laughs> which you have just said uh, before going into the details of that i just want to go back and you know for a girl who is going into the beauty and wellness industry there are a lot of red flags usually but you, in your case, I think it is your spiritual inclination, very okay. strong spiritual inclination, which made you, you know, avoid all the pitfalls and you go on a steady path on yes, progress right. and uh, whatever you do, you're able to do that now. That's right. It is because of that a strong spiritual calling which you had Absolutely. from early childhood. And self-actualization. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, uh, I'm not pedantic. That is, I don't teach from books or Google. It's actually self-actualization and it's self-realized finer truths. Uh, that's how the soul resonance happens. And I can actually call the triggering, triggering and awaken the soul and get that individual to realize herself be beautifully, holistically. Wonderful. Wow. I really need time to digest that. <laughs> and of course, our viewers, ma'am, talking about uh, the wellness industry. Uh, with everything included, the beauty uh, part is also there because you train uh, beauty pageants, right? right. Uh, uh, the participants. My biggest in the... forte is training international and national beauty queens. Uh, I train Miss USA's, Miss Russia's, Miss Mrs. India's, and my company that is Worldwide Institute of Grooming and Pageants. Okay. We affiliate partners. Okay. Some of the most prestigious international and national shows, and I, I share the jury panel with a lot of Bollywood celebs. And have been honored with multitudinous awards uh, such as UNESCO affiliated awards, PMO affiliated awards, multitudinous Bollywood awards. So when you are uh, very genuine in your contribution and you have the clarity of vision that you're contributing to the society, Mother Nature, come your way. yes, these yes. are very humble, uh, you know, milestones, landmarks that just give you that encouraging pep, that little push that yes, I'm on track and uh, we being upheld for the work we are doing. Press, we are very clear as to what we're going to do in any case. Okay, ma'am. Uh, we are sitting, uh, you know, in Rajasthan, in India, where still there are a lot of taboos, you know, That's regarding, right. uh, you know, beauty and, you know, how a girl should present herself. Yes. So uh, tell our viewers, uh, even now in our society, we have this mindset that, you know, all these glam shows are kind of, you know, it doesn't have any substance, and it's all vanity and, you know. Uh, so, but tell our viewers what you focus when you train a contestant who is aspiring for a beauty pageant. What are, what are those factors where you, where you put your focus on? Right. See, when we were talking about queenhood, Miss or Mrs. India or an international queen, we're talking about queenhood. 
so who is a queen a queen is a perfect personification of a holistically well groomed personality that is she need to be a beautiful on the outer world and also be very beautiful from inside only then she befits being a queen and what is the major factor that distinguishes an individual to becoming a queen who is her natural calling for social contribution in fact even okay. in miss india contest or miss worlds miss universes 40% of the evaluation goes on the social contribution that is the projects they have actually executed in uplifting the society okay. so um, there are some misnomers that you know miss india is about just glam girls you know walking around in bikinis no it's about owning your beauty and presenting your beauty very gracefully and then you have an agenda you're given a stature where you're acknowledged and appreciated for your holistic beauty and once you're given that stature what you're making out of it is you're making a difference to the society yes yes, yes. so um, tell us some some incidents from you or some inspiring incidents from your journey so far which right. can inspire inspire our viewers right. a very recent uh, incident which is not so inspiring but it ought to be an eye uh, opener for the parents of today's okay. times i mean recently i had this beautiful girl 19 year old girl from rajasthan she came and visited me and she was just weeping all the time the first time she met me she says i lost my father i was very aware i was barely 2 years old and my mother left me with my tayu ji because she wanted to pursue her higher studies so all my life the title i had was bichari are iske papa guzar gaye iski maa chhod ke chali gayi so all and she started playing that bichari card mm, because yes, it was very yeah. safe uh, place to operate from and when she came all she was being was bichari and bichari and i got her out of it and said let's not play that card you are shakti swarupini prakriti swarupini after god the most powerful entity on this planet is the woman herself because god creates and woman procreates in fact woman works in partnership with god to execute his plans so you can never be bichari you are a manifestation of mother nature herself you are shakti swarupini prakriti swarupini with these powerful words we went into she cleansing her emotional debris she was carrying so much you know ever since her childhood and we cleansed her emotional debris and uh, you know started getting her to realize her subconscious abilities all that trauma is in the conscious mind but the subconscious mind is pristine pure whole and complete and perfect charged by the soul so this cleansing the conscious mind and awakening the subconscious mind collapsing the domain of the subconscious and the conscious and getting the soul connectivity putting soul mind body emotions finances and society in order you see united nations says that if you want an individual to experience complete total wellness you need to ensure that she has perfect synergy on her all her six dimensions that is body mind emotions soul finances and society agar ek bhi uh, dimension zyada powerful ho gaya you will not be able to strike the right kind of speed you need to have vis-a-vis your journey of life so we worked on very deeper self and when she started getting in touch with her deeper self she looked and we make her look beautiful on the outside she looked no less than uh, an international model i was amazed myself if i show you her pictures you can't believe the before and the after and we got her to a point that she cleared herself for femina miss india auditions and when her parents get to know her parents her parents as is her family was in rajasthan when they got to know that she's doing all of this she was sent to delhi to pursue studies which she didn't want to she was, was forced to follow up upsc she was forced to follow medicine which she doesn't have a bent for and for some time she dug out that time and resources where she could follow her in her calling and she looked amazingly beautiful and having cleared famina miss india in precisely 2 months the auditions her parents got to know and just pulled her back and took her back to the village where her mother wears a ghungar and again she's in that society rigmarole how how do you look at this insecurities of the society the parents will it change uh, uh, how do you look at 
see the time is there is a transition happening where a lot of doctors manushi chillers and mbbs from a small town uh, we have harnas sandhu who's from a village from punjab and these beautiful girls are walking in bikinis on international stages i'm sure their villages don't uphold it the, but the moment they get titles then everybody says harnas sandhu is from my village and manushi chillers is from my village or my town so uh, gradually the transition is happening but parents have to you know come out of the shackles of society that no longer a doctor or an engineer is the only most sought after profession today a hair stylist earns more than a doctor it is and today it's a skill based society it's a craft based society it's not just degrees and don't force your child to follow a degree what she is not cut out for maybe she can do so much better when she follows that craft uh, so it's time parents really need to be awakened on being honest to their own kids and uh, allow giving them the space to blossom as their soul wants to express herself mm-hmm. and there is a lot of lot of things in the society happening we hear a lot of stories where you know girls wanted to be in the field of modeling and uh, uh, all these things they uh, have had some very you know dark things happen That's to right. them yeah, so so uh, maybe it is those things which makes the parents so how do you assure a girl watching this that you know see the- first of all no industry is clean by itself if i talk brass tacks and i talk in a very honest term the doctor is cornering the nurse hmm. principal is cornering the teacher pilot is cornering the flight attendant today a girl is not safe in her own house because a tauji or a, a cousin is cornering the sister right right so it is totally your strength of character but in glamour industry it's embellished on because it's open mm. other industries it's it's, it's under the yes, cover yes, yes. so it looks good but it's dirty from inside you know there's a lot of dirt on, inside under the carpet so here girls are bold enough to project it there it happens under sham so it's totally your strength of character i mean i've done so many tv programs on casting couch and says this industry is about casting couch that you have to sleep around to walk the slimy ladder of success it's completely i mean i've lived life on my terms and i have never got this up you have to meet with your own eyes next morning so don't do things where you don't compromise on your values yeah. but today times have changed girls want uh, a quick job done and the standards yes. of morality are undergoing transition yes, so yes. the yug parivartan ho hi raha hai so let's flow with the time because uh, the yug parivartan is happening at a very fast pace and if you go against the current they would not listen you so flow with the current and then gradually be a part of them and uh, try and bring a transition mm, as you can yes ma'am uh, i know tv serial artist who was connected to the brahma kumaris who right after coming uh, to the brahma kumaris she stopped actually uh, working in mm. the serials because uh, she couldn't take that anymore right. so uh, a lot of incidents like that i wanted to ask you uh, what brahma kumaris is projecting is you know we believe that after this kali yuga very soon a golden age is coming right where people uh, will live with their virtues rather than you know Uh, there will be light in the world where there is darkness you said a lot of things are happening under the carpet which is very true so uh, we are working for a world where uh, these you know there is light and light only even though it may uh, seem like an utopian dream but uh, we are very determined that you know we should bring that world and it with us how do you look at this and uh, do you find uh, do you find a way to incorporate these two uh, different things uh, the the you know how the way which you train the contestants right. incorporating this you know we specifically deal with the eight inner powers spiritual powers and the 16 celestial degrees of a deity you said a woman is a shakti swarupini right. so uh, we take it to a very practical level and how can we incorporate this to so that we can also work towards a future life see that? i i always train my students about the now point okay. i mean i also train padmashri awardees i train Asian African ambassadors I train company CEOs medical fraternity who own hospitals these are people who have arrived in the social norms i mean there's nothing more they can ask for mm. but at that point also they 
experience a certain hollowness and they feel that they've chased, chased materialistic gains, but they've lost themselves in the bargain. So getting such an individual to realize his higher self is a passion I follow. So I say khud plus a is what? Khud plus a is, I'm asking you. Khud Kuda. plus a is? Khuda. Speak loudly. Khuda. 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 So yes. khud plus a is khuda. So aapke khud se khuda hai aur aapke khud se khuda ki khudai hai. And wo khudai aapke khud mein baiti hoi hai. So divine spark existed within all, says the Holy Bible. And every soul is potentially divine, says Swami Vikana. So that golden era yet exists inside you. It's just that the layers of ignorance and, uh, you know, um, ignorance and not knowing your own self takes you away from your deeper self. So for torchbearers like us who are light workers, who are working in a camouflage fashion, the golden era is here and now. It's, you know, in the now point, God has given you the willpower to cause and manifest your future as you wish. So unwinding uh, and closing your past stories and existing in the now point, you are that light. So golden era is not after Kalyu, golden era is in the now point. We can bring it right now. That's bring what it you're right saying. now, consciously mm. tuning in with your divine self and uh, disconnecting with the so-called social personality and arriving into yourself deeper and deeper. And then expressing and causing manifestations is, uh, is golden era here and now. Yes. And that's what I cherish doing, though I, I feel I want to... Uh, increase the magnitude of my contributions. I feel I'm doing it at a very small level, but uh, I am allowing Mother Nature to unwind and open the future path so that it escalates in dimension and I can make a difference on a much larger scale. Amazing, man. Here for the first time in the Brahma Kumaris headquarters. Yes, but I've been uh, attached to Brahma Kumaris since okay, my early okay, childhood. Okay. We used to visit from Kauri's headquarters, Delhi-based quarters in okay, my early okay. childhood. How did you feel coming to this this campus, just, just for the sake of our viewers? It's absolutely beautiful, paradise on earth. And uh, actually the vibrations are very pure. And uh, they again get you reconnected and reawakened to your deeper self, which is so sure. very needed, even for people like us. Thanks a lot, madam. Hope you will uh, continue this. Yes. This connection with the Brahma Kumaris, Absolutely. and you know, we can uh, collaborate into more programs. Absolutely, I'm planning as to how we can be more frequenting, more uh, you know, appearing more frequently, and uh, start making difference as and when we can, in Thanks whichever capacity Thanks we can. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. So, dear friends, uh, the message is very loud and clear. It is not just outside beauty, and uh, even though society is looking at these things, there is a taboo in the society, but things can change. And uh, girls need to be empowered. They need to come out and show who they are to the world. She said, a woman is a Shakti Surubini. Of course, a man also is. But because our, our um, society is mostly man-centric, we need to give special care to our girls and our women. So let's do that. And... Uh, go very fast to a, a beautiful society. And she said, it is right now within us. If we can remove the layers, we can experience the golden age. Let's do that. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll, you, we'll see you in the next episode of Fake Mulakat. Thank you very much.